So I'll start up here. Try to see that right now. So we thought it might be nice to follow a, a small piece of land through the seasons. And um, this is the small piece of land. So there's actually a lot of wild food hidden amongst all of this amorphous greenery and this amorphous brownery over here. Um, there are things we can eat now and there's a lot of it that's dormant that's going to be emerging. And um, so there's actually a lot of drama and wild food events going to happen through the seasons just on this small space. So let's, let's get into it. So as soon as we step on there's um, Ribwort Plantain down here. Uh, <clears throat> which is characterized by these parallel veins. That's a very nutritious plant with a lot of protein and vitamins, but it also has medicinal benefits because it has kind of mucilage that soothes irritation and, and also helps staunch bleeding. Um, it tastes like mushrooms. And that's apparently because it has a, a kind of fungus that grows inside the cells, which is quite fascinating. Um, we have some some black medic here, which looks like clover, but has these little little black spots. The main interest with that, for me, is the little black seeds. They are very similar to alfalfa. It's closely related to alfalfa. Um, various thistles and the real interest with thistles is the base um, there's a crunchy base there the mid ribs the middle part of the leaf is very crunchy and there's no thorns at that point point. and if you go just a little bit deeper down you've got root and uh, can slice these roots at the top and the plant will grow back or if you, for some reason, did want to get rid of your thistles, you can dig them up and use the whole root. But that's that's very um, like Jerusalem artichoke. <clears throat> it has a wonderful um, fibre called inulin in it, which is very good for feeding your gut bacteria and enabling your your, um, your digestive system to signal when it's had enough to eat. Now here we have some dock leaves. These are a bit tiny, hello puss. Um, but that sort of thing can go into a crunchy salad. It tastes a little bit like rhubarb or sorrel. Um, it's probably more worth bothering with when they've grown a little bit further. But the other interesting thing about dock leaves is that down at the base, underneath this uh, sheathing, um, I'm not sure you can really see it, but it gets a bit slimy and that slime is, is like our native aloe vera very good for soothing stuff um, if you check out the website of Monica Wild she'll tell you more about this kind of stuff it's a uh, person who drew my attention to that that it's the UK's aloe vera here this is blackthorn or slow you can see the buds just beginning to show here in um, a week or two's time that's going to be white blossom displayed on these bare brownish to black branches it's really a wonderful sign of the the land waking up when those blossoms come out you can see it from long distance away all across the hedgerows there's, there's white announcing that the the uh, spring is beginning and new life is emerging. Uh, down here, there's some new life emerging from these nettles. Just little nettle shoots. Um, these could be harvested now, uh, but they'll be a lot more abundant in a few weeks' time. And here, that's the dead old growth of nettles, and that's always a good trick. You can, uh, you can spot the presence of plants once you know how to recognize the dead growth. Even in the middle of winter where there's no green stuff, you can say that's where the nettles will be, if you recognise that. 
and uh, here we have elder just beginning to produce green shoots there that's obviously going to blossom and produce fruit later on now down here looking very similar to the dock leaf this is common sorrel it's a nice little patch there again it's the first spring emergence they will get uh, larger but they won't get tastier this is probably um, as as crunchy and delicious as this plant will get so I was talking about dead stalks and signs of life this is the uh, dead stalks of the hogweed and um, there's absolutely no sign of life down at the base of this um, so that's yet to emerge but it's a perennial plant the roots are in the ground just sleeping still and this is what it managed to produce last year quite substantial typical of the carrot family of these umbrella shaped structures all the seeds have fallen off but uh, they'll be coming through again um, for next autumn this is um, actually a spice plant in terms of the seeds but the leaves are a crunchy delicious vegetable um, some more dock down there and here we have cleavers which is um, a plant that's been widely used as a spring tonic you can make a tea out of this or juice it and it's very good for the the um, for lymphatic system um, however the nicest thing that um, I know to do with it is you grab a nice bunch of it scrunch it up put it in a jug of water that's a cold infusion it draws out some lovely subtle nuances like green banana and cucumber it's quite delicious um, and easy to do this this is very sparse at the moment but in a few weeks time there'll be just great big bundles of this very easy to pick a large amount quite quickly this is blackthorn or bramble uh, sorry this is bramble uh, not blackthorn um, blackberry that'll produce that wonderful juicy fruit that we all know later in the year this is um, this is the first time I've noticed this here I think it might either we overlooked it last year or it's just emerged so that's kind of fun to discover something new on this spot this is wintergreen it's a bitter cabbage family plant slightly mustardy and that you can use as bitter greens or chop it into your salad it's another good one for the crunchy salad so with those I tend to just take that and keep this separate for another use chop that into a crunchy salad with a few other stalks like the dock that we've already seen here we have a tiny little bit of chickweed one of our favorite wild salads super abundant if if, uh, if it has enough room to grow it's kind of being something to fight for for room here and amongst all of this grass but in more open ground it can be just great big bushes of chickweed very delicious tastes a little bit like corn and it's one of the milder wild salads Now it's quite fun standing here watching the camera zoom in because this is of course what we've done we've stood over there and then we've just come in close and there's things you couldn't possibly have spotted from over there and you really do have to move through this piece of ground to to see everything and i suppose that's one of the nicest things about foraging is that it does make you focus in your attention on the things that you might otherwise walk past and the more you focus in the more you see um this is this is called hairy bittercress it's a very lovely um, salad leaf like the chickweed it's very common most gardeners will have it and 
if they don't know what they've got they'll be declaring war on it and trying to get rid of it but don't do that it's a wonderful resource that your garden is providing you for free it's milder than milder and I would say much more accessible than watercress very slight peppery kick sort of sweet and and delicate also very very pretty there's a lot of plants that grow just in this area um, and I think some of them may be completely dormant at the moment I'm going to see what else I can find um, well of course there's clover here we use the white and the red clover flowers they're broken we break them up into salads this time of year there's just the leaf I have to confess I've done almost nothing with leaf but uh, in Native American cultures there's there's all sorts of um, practices around I think the younger clover where it, it was a major item of diet and I believe it was also um, preserved or fermented in some way um, for us that's an area still to explore right so down here we have a delicate dandelion um, and uh, we tend to cut that just at the top of the root there and then you see you get these beautiful leaves so you get several little bunches like that once you tease it apart and um, making this a delicate salad leaf now we harvest the dandelion all through the year and we'll take it when it's very big and probably in need of chopping up but that's about as fine and delicate as it gets Okay, well I suppose in a way it's as interesting to not see things as it is to see them because as we keep doing this um, through subsequent weeks and months you'll, uh, you'll get to see what emerges that's not visible now. Uh, I have just spotted though, one of the plants I'm looking for. This is smooth sow thistle and it's teeny teeny tiny at the moment. That gets really quite substantial. Um, and they tend to mow off this area, but uh, it can be a tall plant if it's not mown. Well, just in the interest of balance and given the full picture, lest I create the impression that you can eat everything here, there's actually one slightly poisonous plant. This is buttercup. Uh, if you eat that raw, it's going to irritate your mouth. It's kind of this burning sensation. But the uh, the chemical that causes that um, does actually break down if you cook it. I can't say I've ever tried cooking buttercup leaves, but in theory, it is possible to do so. You have some wild radish, radish. Looking a bit scraggly for now. That'll get better as the season moves on. Some daisy leaf, um, which is a bit fiddly, but I would tend not to use this as a salad. It's a little bit astringent, but um, once you cook it, it it, uh, it improves greatly. So it's kind of baby greens, really just wilt that down slightly serve it with a bit of olive oil or butter yeah a bit of sheep poo there we have a sheep that escaped now this is uh, bristly ox tongue and I forgot to mention with the south thistle there it's a very good source of omega-3 um, as is this one so again it's a bit feeble at the moment wouldn't think to harvest that at the moment but the uh, the midrib that's that little line down the middle there gets as thick as your finger when these get bigger and that makes a very good crunchy salad the young stems are good to eat as well okay then last but not least there's a little um, pretty edible flower there that speedwell the leaf is edible too it's um, slightly 
bit of fresh tasting salad leaf always a good addition lots of medicinal uses to that one okay so I'm not sure if anyone's been counting but I make that 15 different wild species on this piece of land and um, there will be more as the season progresses so let's come back in a couple of weeks and see what it looks like then <laughs>